All of us are aware of what happened in Paris last month. We're aware of what happened in San Bernardino. In my view, the United States, along with other countries, has got to crush ISIS. We have got to destroy ISIS. But I get a little bit tired of hearing some of my Republican colleagues who talk about how tough they are going to be. This is not just a question of being tough. It is a question of being smart. Now, what does, that, what does that mean? What does that mean? All right, let me back up a little bit. The truth is that when you are an immensely powerful nation like the United States, we have the capacity to overthrow governments and dictators. Nothing new about that. We can do that. But what our job is, is to be thinking about what happens the day after you overthrow a dictator. What does that mean for that region? What does it mean for the United States? Now, in 2002, I was a member of the House before I was elected to the Senate. I listened extremely carefully to what President Bush and Vice President Cheney and Don Rumsfeld and Condoleezza Rice and all those folks said about the war in Iraq. And I listened closely because there is no vote that a member of Congress casts more important than one regarding war and peace, because we know the consequences of war. I listened very carefully, and I ended up not only voting against the war, but helping to lead the opposition against the war. And if you go to my website or go to YouTube, just check it out, you will hear the speech that I gave way back when, expressing my fears about what would happen if we invaded Iraq in terms of the destabilization of the region. And it gives, me, it gives me no pride, no joy, absolutely none, to suggest that much of what I feared would happen, in fact, did turn out and did occur. Now, as the former chairman of the Veterans Committee, I learned what the cost of war is. A lot of Americans don't know what the cost of war is. And I think we have people in this room who know better than I do what the cost of war is. Iraq and Afghanistan, 6,700 of our bravest, most decent young people never came home. And in my small state of Vermont, our Vermont National Guard was mobilized in an unprecedented way since World War II. And I will tell you, because it breaks my heart, about how many funerals I went to in the state of Vermont for young people who never came home. Not only 6,700 lost, I want all of you to know that another 500,000 came home wounded in body and wounded in soul. Huge numbers with <clears throat> post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, families broken apart, divorce, suicide rates. That is the cost of war. And I got a little bit tired of some politicians talking about how we're going to go in there. And we're going to be in war year after year, decade after decade. It is not their kids who are going into war, it is your kids. So you, you will forgive me, you'll forgive me, but this is an emotional issue for me because I've gone to too many funerals and talked to too many gold star mothers, gold star wives.